The run for women is pretty exciting. I'm going to introduce now Jillian Dawson, uh, volunteer extraordinaire. So uh, Jillian has been a volunteer with the Royals Foundation for the past 17 years. She's contributed greatly to the Royal, particularly with the Royal Shoppers Love You Run for Women. Uh, most recently, Jillian was instrumental in leading the largest run for women team in 2020. And the run for women just keeps growing every year. Every year breaks a new record. Uh, Jillian has inspired many people to become involved. She believes very strongly uh, in the impact it has on our community, our fellow Canadians. Um, Jillian's personal family connection to mental illness and the Royal from decades ago continues to drive her determination to change the landscape of mental illness and be part of transforming women's mental health in Canada. So hi, Jillian, welcome. Hi, Catherine. I'm really Thanks. great to be here today. Yeah, thank you for, for taking the time. This is awesome to have so many amazing women here today. So um, the first question, what inspired you to become involved with the Royal? So the Royal is a very special place to me. It's a very special place to many people in this community. Um, so many people have been affected by the work of the Royal, both the hospital and uh, the Institute, uh, the research center aspect. Um, the Royal has saved the lives of people I know, of my friends, uh, of my father. And so my connection to the Royal is really personal. Um, as a young child, you, some of you may not remember the old Royal, the original Royal, which looked very different than the beautiful building today. But I walked those halls as a child many times, um, and it looked very different back then. And so, um, you know, I, I have this deep connection um, that goes so far back. And then, you know, fast forward to 2000s, when I found myself back at the Royal um, for work at the time. And when I was there, I saw the face of a young woman named Heather. And Heather was the, there's Heather. Um, Heather's face was the first face uh, that we put to mental health. She put her hand up and said, yeah, I will be the poster child for mental health through the You Know Who I Am campaign, which I give the Royal so much credit for because that was the first time we really put faces uh, to mental health. And when I saw Heather, I was, you know, I thought I need to do more. Um, and that's when I started to get involved uh, with the Royal. To be honest and to be frank, I was very, uh, sad about my dad's mental health and um, I was very sad that we kept his story a secret. Um, it was time to do something and um, speaking today as you can hear by my voice is hard for me. It's part of my journey as Claudette said like today I'm letting you in um, and part of that is is through the community of Run for Women. Uh, so I'm just so thrilled to be here and talk about the Royal and talk about the run and the impact that it can, it has had and continue to have on this community. Amazing. Well, we're very grateful that you, you are part of this. Um, you've been part of the run for women uh, since the beginning. Uh, why is this event? I guess you've just explained why it's so important. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, like that definitely. Event? So I like to refer to it as the walk run for women. I know it's called the run for women, but it's I really, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really the walk, run, saunter, and just be there for women's mental health. Um, you know, I, I, I've been part of this because quite frankly, you know, when I reflect back on walking through the ha halls of the Royal, at that time, and as a young woman, I could have never imagined us running for women's mental health. I could never have imagined the brave women who put their faces on that video talking about deep issues like postpartum depression. Um, so I'm here for those people. I'm here because I also like running. Um, running for me keeps my mind calm. I was a little bit afraid to do this today. And so this morning I went for a run and it just refreshed me and reset me. It makes me feel calm. It makes me tune into the abundance in my life. And it is part of my own mental health self-care. So it was a natural fit for the role to say, hey, Jillian, you know, do you want to get 
involved with the the run. Um, I also run, and this will probably resonate with you, Catherine, as an, to be an example for my daughter, um, to be an example of self-love and self-care, because I really believe we need more of those things as women. I love this picture. Uh, it, uh, it makes my heart smile so much. Um, there's a bit of irony in this picture, though. So when this picture was taken, my daughter was three. And... Um, at the time, I had a different construct in my head. Uh, I was trying to model exercise, strength, and community to my daughter. Um, over time, my message to her has changed, and it's just part of my journey, my recovery, part of what I'm learning as I talk to you today. Um, my message to her is not finish strong, <laughs> actually. Uh, that's the irony. Um, my message to her is that it takes strength to show up, to be seen, to be vulnerable, to let people in, as Claudette said. Um, and it takes strength to stand up for other people uh, and say, you know, I'm here to help you, um, to not judge them, but to just be with them. I really feel like we have an opportunity to create environments amongst our friends, our family, our workplaces, our neighborhood, where people can ask for help without fear of judgment or reprisal. So being strong to me is not about crossing the finish line fast or crossing the finish line at all. Um, it's about taking a stand for people who um, can sh show up and be seen for who they are. It's about facilitating help. So I'm inspired by the run for these reasons. I'm inspired by the run for the run by the people, the women on the video. And I'm inspired by the run, you know, by the strong people that are around me. These are moms who have lost children. Uh, these are moms who are returning to work with anxiety, with that pressure Anne-Marie described, you know, of having to do, having to do it all, um, having anxiety about the demands of work and home. Um, these are women that feel like they're not good enough because they are indoctrinated by facades of what they see women should be on social media. These are women who have suffered domestic violence, uh, you know, sexual abuse, uh, women who have tried, and I know these women, to take their own lives. I'm sure you know people like this too. I do this for them and I do this for myself because this is important work, having these conversations today. <laughs> these yeah. women, they're among us. You know this, Catherine. Um, they're in our houses. They're on our streets. They're in our workplaces. Um, and I do this because I want to stand up with them and say, I'm here for you, and we're all in this together. And that's part of why the Royal is actually really important community too for me it's like a safe space and Amory talked about protective factors and the royal is like my place where i can be comfortable talking about mental health sharing about mental health it's a community i've made some amazing friendships through the royal and through the run um it's uh it's created a really great community for me the run for women in my workplace, um, I've met people through social media that have become friends and lifelines who send me little notes to say, how are you doing today? I haven't heard from you. Uh, and that means so much to me. So there's so many reasons um, to be inspired by the Run for Women. And they're more than just running and walking, Catherine. Yeah. I think you answered the last question too by by saying all that. Just, you know, why should others be involved? It's It's very clear. It's, yeah it's, it's an it's an important i think we're stronger together when we when we help each other right when we have stronger communities it it, it helps everybody whether you have a mental i'm starting to get sniffly sorry um it is tough it is tough um uh there's still a lot of shame people still carry a lot of shame for um for, for being diagnosed with mental illness or having mental health issues, for whatever reason, everybody's different. And I think taking that judgment out of the equation is really important. I think it's really important for 
all of us to remember, it doesn't matter. Everybody's story is different. Everybody yeah. deserves to be healthy. Everybody has to find that path. Um, running is awesome for you, but we know that it takes a combination of things. It's not just, you know, we know that, right? Um, one thing that I've noticed with my daughters, uh, yes, I did the same thing. I dragged them to all these fundraisers and tried to set good examples. And as they grew, they're now like, my kids are now 18 and 21. And their own mental health issues evolved. And I never thought that would be a thing because I thought, I'm so woke. I've got all this experience. They're going to they're going to be great. They're going to avoid all this. They're still human beings. And I had to change my approach. You know, and they started saying we we get anxious when we go to these things with you. We don't want to do that anymore. I had to recognize that, oh, okay. So my my messaging and the way I approach my own kids changed too. Like there's so many so many good reasons you learn by these conversations. You learn by going to the run for women. You meet people. You meet other people you can relate to. Maybe make friendships for life, right? Absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. I know. Thank you. Thank you. For, it is tough, and thank you so much for being vulnerable. It's it's mm -hmm. a it's a gift. Again, it's a gift that you're sharing right now for everyone, and so. It's very appreciated, deeply appreciated. Thanks, Catherine.